there are two arguments. One of them has some some element of, of support, but um, but in the big picture, it's not. So they're saying we're taking advantage of bees and bees are killed in the process. A lot of bees do die anyway, naturally. Um, you, know, you have to regard um, a colony as an organism. And, you know, some of the bees you have to regard like cells in a body are, are constantly sloughing and sloughing out and constantly dying. But very, very briefly, the um, th their argument is that honeybee production actually takes out it takes out the, um, uh, the honey for natural or takes out resources for natural bees. And I guess that can happen in some areas where you've got huge bee farms. Um, but I, I, I don't think it's a major problem. There's never been a report um, on that that's, that's been sustained. Um, and the other thing is the, you know, locally, beekeepers are, are small beekeepers are, are, you know, you can't throw the baby out with the bottle. Local beekeepers are really important for all the flowers that are going on around here and will actually encourage more seeding. You know, if um, if a plant is a natural plant is fertilised, it's more likely to to grow, more likely to 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 be fertilised and and to reproduce. Um, yeah, and also, and I, I mean, I know we have around on our farm this year. Hopefully, we've got some beekeepers coming in, but they also plant up uh, flowering and and uh, other plants around the place so that they can have a, a resource for their bees, which surely then produces a resource for for other wild bees as well whether it be yeah. solitary bees or or bumblebees mm, or and other insects and other insects as well but yeah but the, the one point i'd like to make is that you know we should support local beekeepers largely because the quality of the honey you're getting is absolutely pure uh compared with um and it's unadulterated so for example if you're getting if you're going to the local supermarket and buy you know one of the cheaper honeys it's probably been imported where it's been imported from, they probably feed it sugar. So they're using the bees to convert the ordinary, uh, ordinary sucrose into um, a type of honey. Um, so it's not as natural, it's not full of the enzymes and all the proteins that are floating around in, in, a, in a natural honey. Well, they say, it, isn't it, that honey is the most uh, counterfeited food in the world? isn't it? It can be, unless you buy it from your beekeeper. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, I was going to, I was going to ask uh, as, as an aside to that um, about the, the taste of honey, because I found when we've bought, I, mean, I think we've got about five or six beekeepers around here, which we regularly buy honey from, uh, especially during the season. I found, yeah. I, I don't know where it is, but there's one farm over in, not too far away from here, I probably shouldn't mention just in case, um, <laughs> but it, it it came back and it sort of tasted like, um, I don't know how to, it's sort of, I, I don't want to say burnt toast, but it was like a mix of like burnt toast and sort of, uh, I don't know how to describe, you know, I'm not a food critic, but it's a very odd taste. That it was really unpleasant. That's interesting. Yeah, that's interesting. They, so honey, honey, the flavor of honey depends on the flowers that they've, uh, or the sorts of sugar that they've, they've got. So, for example, beekeepers will feed sugar, ordinary sugar, a granulated sugar dissolved up um, every winter, just so they can last the winter. Um, most of that will be used up and then they'll start storing honey in, in the from, from the spring onwards. Uh, and I'll, I'll give you a story about the flavor. So the flavor does depend on, so depends on the flowers that they're, um, they're taking. It's a bit like wines really, you know, how they're, how they're the flavors of wines. Um, but I, when I was at university, working at university, when I was sort of in my mid twenties, I, um, I was responsible for beehives on the top of Queen Mary University in Mile End Road. And if you know the East End of London, it's just, you know, it's filthy, it's virtually no plants apart from Victoria Gardens. Um, there's yeah. nothing around really for bees to grow on. So I was surprised. The, the honey, so just to give you some local, what, what's going on locally, there's a lot of breweries locally, and used to be a lot of docks, not so many docks now. Um, and the docks would have, you know, things like bananas coming across um, and lots of damaged bananas. So they're very resourceful. So the bees used to, they used to get their, their sugar uh, from the, the floor of the uh, local brewery. Um, so it used to taste like beer. For one thing. <laughs> um, and also there was a strong taste of bananas as well. And that was coming from these, um, these coming from the docklands and the local brewery. So they are very resourceful and the flavor will depend largely on what they're, what they're eating.
Yeah, that must be pretty strange. I mean, it, that probably tastes counterfeit. If you, if you get a banana tasting honey, I suppose you probably think it's, it's not so good. I can <laughs> <you>. <laughs> beer, beary well, we went, banana. We went, um, 